What is not a bullet you dodged, but a huge tactical nuke you dodged? The second floor of the house I was renting collapsed a month after I moved out. ETA. Apparently a water pipe sprung a leak shortly after we left. We weren't in any trouble. When I was 11 I started losing vision in my left eye, and eventually went completely blind in about 2-3 weeks. After lots of testing we found that I had a brain tumor in my left optic nerve that would likely spread quickly. They gave me a year and a half to live in the best case scenario with treatment. They got the eye surgically removed, started my on radiation and chemo, and luckily I responded well to it. Cancer's long gone, am now a cyclops, and happy to be disease free. I had just moved to Colorado by myself and for whatever reason my mom was encouraging me to get out of the apt and go see the new Batman movie. That was the night of the theater shooting, and not only was that the theater but it was also the showing I was considering going to. I stayed up late playing League of Legends instead and woke up to a lot of texts and missed calls. Probably not ideal for my family's blood pressure that I slept in pretty late that day too. There was an apartment I really wanted but at the last minute I found a slightly better one. The apartment I almost moved into burned to the ground a month later. I used to own a gym with a partner. I sold my half of the company and took a boring but stable government job about three months before the pandemic. Back in college. X cheated and got prego. Blamed it on me, involved her family and all. I was willing to file a case in court with medical legal as needed. X got too pressured as I was talging to her dad about medical tests etc. Out of nowhere she admitted that I wasnt the father and it was some classmate she had a fling with. On a road trip in college with four friends. We stopped halfway for a pit stop because I had explosive diarrhea and was getting more sick by the minute. Friends carried on to Vegas and left me with one of the guys who rented us a car to return home. The friends that carried on got into a rollover. One died, two will be injured for life. We went to Thailand in 2003 for Christmas. I spent a number of years there in the early 90s as a kid, and loved it so much that we were gonna do it again the next year. Spend Christmas watching the sun come up on a beach at Phuket again. We had the tickets and everything, but because of some new fallout from an Enron adjacent scandal, my dad wasn't allowed to leave the country, he wasnt implicated, but was in the C-suite of a credit card company, and all such people were under travel advisory. Anyway, the very hotel we were gonna stay at got 100% wrecked by the tsunami so I guess we got lucky. My father-in-law, was working on construction of a power plant and was scheduled work Sunday, was a union pipe fitter. Saturday he got a call from another company asking him to run a job much closer to his house, think 5 minute commute versus 50, so he accepted and didn't go to the power plant job Sunday. That day there was an explosion at the plant and people in the crew he was working with wound up getting killed. I was briefly engaged to a man who has since cheated on his gorgeous, intelligent, sweet wife hundreds of times. They are separated but have two children and will likely reconcile. I broke our engagement when he said that he thought it was perfectly okay for a man to cheat on his wife if they'd been married for a while and, he'd gotten bored, oddly enough, he didn't believe a woman was entitled to do the same. I feel so badly for his poor wife now. He began cheating on her two years into their marriage when she was pregnant with their first child. I was moving abroad to do a post-grad degree. My flight was to leave out of Newark early morning on 9-11. A family friend who worked in the towers kept prodding me to move my flight to the afternoon and come visit him in the office so he could show me around, my parents were pressuring me to go as well since it was a good networking opportunity. I was on the fence, but decided not to since I was a poor student and didn't want to pay the cab fare from my hotel in NJ to Lower Manhattan. Our friend made it out, thankfully, and I'm guessing I would have well, but no way would I want that experience burned in my memory. Nuke dodge number one, X had some type of breakdown. I woke up with her standing over me with a butcher knife. She in some sort of catatonic state. I didn't move. I don't think she saw that I was awake. Then she left the room after a while, came back into our bedroom son's butcher knife, got in bed, snuggled me until it was time to get up. Then she made me some great waffles for breakfast as cheerful as ever. Didn't get stabbed but still have trouble sleeping unless I'm alone in the room. Nuke dodge number two, another ex cheated on me. She had wanted a baby. We both did, to be honest. So she ended up getting married to the dude she cheated on me with, they had a baby, then she cheated on him and they got divorced. So wife's boyfriend is paying the child support. Life is fucking good. I met a girl one summer and she fell head over heels for me. 
She even ditched her fiancé for me, but when she went back home at the end of summer they got back together, and got married. I saw her again the following summer, and she wanted to pick up where we left off, but I said no. I ran into her years later. She told me all about her sex life, and how her husband could no longer satisfy her, so she was hooking up with random strangers from the internet while he slept in the spare room. They had two kids by that time. I felt sorry for them. Edit. Wow, my top comment ever was about some crazy summer fling from years ago. Who would have thought? My wife and I were prepared to buy a nice riverfront property in 2019, but the owners, her dad and uncle, were dragging their feet. We had our down payment, we were approved for the mortgage, and we had even been living there paying rent. Then the river rose 30 female, 10 male and we had to evacuate. The water kept rising. The house was destroyed before we bought it. So we didn't buy it. During university, X wanted me to get her a work visa. She proposed and even faked being pregnant. The mental stress caused me to flunk my exams, and I had to take a year break back home to save up and come back. Eventually found out that she was cheating on me. Back in the 80s, a friend asked me to go on a motorcycle trip to Alaska with him. I declined. He had an accident on the way, skidded several hundred yards on his head, and now has a metal plate. I would have been on that bike with him. Not me but a family friend managed to avoid the pulse shooting where they were having Thea birthday party because they got had gotten an intense craving for McNuggets so he and his group went to McDonald's down the road. They left roughly 15-20 minutes before everything went down. My family and I were about to leave a store and then my mom had to pee, so we all waited for her. On the highway right in front of us, there was a nasty fatal crash that left multiple people dead. I quit a job after my boss yelled at everybody for faking being sick when one guy came in with the flu and passed it around the office. He claimed that people don't get sick by being near each other. One guy got it so bad he was hospitalized for two weeks. I quit with no backup in October 2019. By February 2020, his company went out of business. Few years ago I was in a small fender bender. Someone merged into my lane, with me in it, and smashed my driver side door and their passenger door together. I had pulled my arm in from having it hanging out the window about 15 seconds before that happened. Would have most likely had my arm ripped off. Walking to work in the winter. Halfway through a step forward under a sky bridge when an icicle taller than me, six, and probably two feet around at the base crashes down right in front of my nose. If my bus had been a half second earlier, if I had walked even a tiny bit faster pace, I would have been impaled from brains to balls. I was frozen in place for a minute, quietly surveying my near death. There was another pedestrian nearby who witnessed it and the wide-eyed, ashen look on his face as he stared at me confirmed just how narrowly fortunate I was that day. Dated a woman who was physically and emotionally abusive. Got caught in the cycle of abuse, gaslighting, etc. Not sure how I was going to leave, afraid to leave, etc. One day a neighbor witnessed one of her violent outbursts and called the police. She was arrested, charged with domestic violence, assault. I was granted a restraining order. Luckily my dilemma took care of itself. If it hadn't, who knows. A buddy of mine told me if I had stayed with her much longer I'd be dead. He wasn't kidding. Almost wound up in the I-35W bridge collapse in Minneapolis years ago. My uncle, cousin, and I were on our way to a twins game. We were originally planning to take the route that crossed the bridge, but last minute decided to take a more scenic route. After it happened, we were talking and we figured it probably would have been within a couple minutes of the time the bridge collapsed that we would have been on the bridge. In school, was about 16, at a house party. Friend's older brother and a bunch of guy's friends show up, bust out some coke. I knocked out. Just bad feelings, so called my mom and left. Party was busted. Some got jail time. Missed it by 15 minutes. I was asked to have a marriage of convenience to help someone get a green card. I saw a few friends involved in that community all have horrible issues and tons of stress. I don't need that shit. I was dating this co-worker who lied all the time. I told her from the beginning that I didn't want to start anything if she wasnt serious and if there was someone else. She assured me no, and she had deep feelings for me. One day out of the blue, a random girl stopped by our workplace and asked around for the girl I was dating. In a building filled with hundreds of people, I happened to be the only one at the front, and asked what's going on. Turns out, this random person was pretty much there to start a fight. The girl I was dating was sending nudes to her boyfriend. Whoops. If I had not been at the front, I would have never found out. 
One angry text later, I never heard from her again. Was chatting with a woman at the bar, nothing flirtatious just casual banter. I told her I needed to head out and she asked if I could give her a ride. I was headed that way so it wasn't a big deal. We pull into her driveway and I can see a guy at a computer in the living room through the window. I ask who it is and she replied, that's my husband, he's a pansy. I'll bring him outside and you scare him off. Then we can have the house all to ourselves for the night. Every alarm bell in my head was ringing and all I could think was, how do I get this crazy out of my truck without a big scene? So I said, sounds good. As soon as she was halfway to the door I put it gear and burned rubber. Some 10 years ago I got introduced to, what I thought was, a weed dealer by friends. Fucker tried to sell me heroin and was really pushy about it. I ended up buying nothing and thought about snitching him. For some dumb reason I didn't, but someone else did. My ex ran over a mother of two with his car and fled the scene. I almost put spoiled cream in my coffee this morning. It was touch and go for a while. Came up shy of our financial goal for a wedding and decided to save again for another year. We were gonna go on an adventure and elope. Relationship fell apart in the following year. Both of us put nails in the coffin, I was the only one to acknowledge mine. She could do no wrong, and I was being gaslit pretty bad. When we split my depression evaporated, I was able to go off my meds, and realize just how deep she had her claws in me. I thank God every day we didnt get married, my mental health would have been horrendous. When I was a kid, about six, I somehow threw a piece of metal in the sky and watched it fall in my face. It opened a large and bloody cut right under my right eye. When my mom saw me rubbing my closed eye with a sea of blood she almost had an attack. But no, I was fine. Got some stitches and it was hella scary but all good, didn't even leave a scar. If my dumb ass was hit just a bit higher, I would have lose an eye. Well, not as bad as the others, but I really wanted to move into a small apartment. It was close to my girlfriend's place and also quite big for the price, seemed great, but the landlord didn't want a student but only workers. Since we were already in touch with the previous renter, we later found out that the landlord began to bully this poor soul out of the apartment because he needed it for himself, which began with unfriendly treatment and ended with full-out renovations starting in his bath without him being warned, so he had no bathroom for three months. I moved into another apartment that I still live in today, and only a few weeks after moving my previous place caught fire and nearly burned down. Back in 2010 playing MW2 an enemy is on a 20 kill streak. Found where he's camping. I die a few times trying to kill him. He's at 23 kills. Decide to noob tube until he dies. Kill him right after he gets his 24th kill. Crisis averted. My best friend, not me, but when we were younger, a guy we knew a little, who was extremely charming and debonair, asked her on a date. Everybody liked him and urged her to say yes, but she got a really creepy vibe off him and turned him down. 20 years later, he's all over the news because he's been arrested as a serial killer who would approach women, charm them, take them on dates, and murder them. He started killing women right about the time he asked her out. If she'd gone out with him, she would have been one of his first three victims. The police even interviewed her as they tried to piece together the early years of his murder spree. Met a girl online. Went on one date. She seemed, off. Three months later she's on effing entertainment tonight for breaking up the marriage of a famous sports reporter reporter and threatening his wife at their home. My ex, she ended up cheating on me with a few guys including, friends, she turned out to be actually crazy, psychotic extremely manipulative and took advantage of my weaknesses that I opened up to her about she was suicidal, self-harming and used it to trap me in the relationship. There's more but you get the point. Caught my girlfriend cheating with her ex before I propose. When my nephew was nine months old, I brought him to live with me. A week later, someone broke into the house I took him from and killed all the dogs inside by slitting their throats. I still get the sweats every time I wonder what would have happened, if he'd been there. I can answer this in a literal way. When I was a child, I was playing video games with my little brother. Well, he found our dad's gun and fired it. No one was hurt but it scared the shit out of me. Dated a girl in high school. We broke up. Ended up going to the same college and getting back together. After about six months she calls and breaks up with me, and that same day I see her relationship status change to some new guy. A few months later she is married and announces she has a kid coming. Looking back I missed a bunch of red flags about what she wanted. Newt dodged. When I was younger me and my brothers were playing in the yard. The youngest one fell and hit his head. 
My stepfather, being an alcoholic veteran, pulled an R10, walked outside, and pointed it right between my eyes. I said if he kills me he would have to kill the other two and my mom. He thought about it for a few and instead of shooting me, he beat the piss out of me. It'd say that turned a nuke into a bullet. My ex was giving off a ton of red flags and so I broke up with him. After he moved from Washington to Mississippi which is a pretty bad state for a gay person to be in and now he's living in a trailer with a harem of guys that just really look like they don't take good care of themselves. This guy also was blowing through his inheritance like it was nothing, ordering off DoorDash every night, buying other expensive stuff, giving out enormous tips etc. This was a large part of breaking up with him as I don't have need for someone with large spending habits as I want a house in my future. We were in Italy on a school field trip. We decided to play Schweinhofen, pig pile, dog pile. Anyways on person is declared the pig and everyone has to jump on them. We played this on a beach at night. Just sand, no danger, right? Well, the last round we got up and realized we formed this pile next to a one male metal pole sticking out of the ground. It was maybe 10 centimeters away and could have easily impaled the first 3-4 people. We didn't play that game again. Sold a car that was only 3 years old, but starting to have issues, the glove box fell off, for one, and it had a cracked suspension spring that I had to replace. I didn't need it anymore, I had inherited it, it became my fourth car, then I changed jobs and started commuting by train. Got it an MOT, sold it that week. That weekend the guy gets back in touch to say it's lunched its engine. Some sort of cam sensor failed, and it ate the valves, bits of valve train in the engine. Did I know of an issue with the car before I sold it? I was able to say, hand on heart, that I didn't. I still feel a little bad, but as it's a private sale, he had no recourse. If he hadn't bargained me down £250 I would have offered some sort of recompense. He ended up scrapping the car. Got fired from my shitty ass job. Best thing ever happened to me. One year later, I was chatting with a former co-worker, and he mentioned my boss, a soul-eating banshee, had lost all of her subordinates because they couldn't handle her anymore, thus the department is now struggling. Now I'm in grad school, being happy about what I do for the first time in my life. I fell 12 feet off of a roof onto concrete. I shattered my knee and braced the rest of the fall with my arm. It would have been game over if I'd landed on my head. Cops nicely asking me to answer a few questions. No thanks, officer. Almost worked at 38 Studios. For those who don't know that was the gaming studio by Kurt Schilling that went bankrupt, and got into all kinds of legal trouble. 9-11. I didn't go to work that morning. Got lazy. I would have been in the North Tower. The survivor's guilt was a bitch for a long time. I'm still not sure I'm over it, really.